Hey everyone, and welcome to Hungover Podcast with your boys, Yvonne and Julian. Today we're going to go over some really exciting topics uh, about the new modes of television, subscription, and all of that stuff that's coming out with a bunch of different places, including very own YouTube. But if you want to listen to us, you don't sub to Netflix or Hulu or Amazon. What do you go to, Julian? You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on SoundCloud. And you can also find us in video form on YouTube.com slash Hungover Gaming. Um, go ahead and check us out there. We have a bunch of videos that we also upload based on video games. Uh, you might just be tuning in. This could be your first time listening to this podcast. Uh, if so, uh, I would like to tell you that thank you so much. And also, we start this podcast off every day, every week, sorry, on Mondays at 9 a.m. Uh, we started off by asking each other what media we've been consuming. It's, I guess, very important in this uh, podcast because of the topic. But also, what did you drink last night, Yvonne? Hey, uh, so last night I returned to form with a little bit of that snake bite goodness. Oh, keeping it. I've been I've been Guinness. into it because it's uh I got a, a Granny Smith cider, Guinea. so it was a bit sour. Ooh, that's actually nice. I still have not I still have yet to try this drink. You're you're hyping it up, everyone out there. Go ahead and get grab yourself a Guinness or a stout, and grab yourself a cider and mix those two. It sounds horrible sort of not really actually it sounds pretty delicious right about now i might do it after we uh record this but yo yeah. here's here's the secret to also it. oh yeah well you're gonna tell us chocolate here. stout and cider Ooh, yeah because chocolate does can go well with Ooh. apples that's pretty good awesome wait can you can you tell me the proportions of this drink half and half half and half that's so easy and simple and it comes in cans and things just do it just here's the it. thing about yeah. it too you go half and half if you don't exactly get it half and half you have different proportions for the next one and you see <laughs> which you like more a little bit more beer a little bit more cider oh, which one's man. better you decide it's like choose your own adventure that turn to page great. six <laughs> um, um what else have you yeah. been doing though that's that sounds like a great drink did you drink anything else uh let's see uh ooh. so on friday of this week mm-hmm I tried out this Rioja, Rioja, which is a bit older. It was a 2010 Rioja okay. Tempranillo, uh, and it was pretty pretty good. But I've been getting way back into Merlot's. Oh, Merlot great. is Merlot. pretty delicious. What is and, it? Uh, Merlot. Just I, it was um, uh, I just threw away the the stopper or what is it? Uh, the what cork. Is it called? The cork. Where yeah. do you know where it's from? <laughs> California, I was guessing. Napa guess. Valley, probably. Yeah. Sonoma Valley, maybe. I don't know. Making I, that up. I, I recommend getting back into Mulo's just because the market took a dive so hard. that it's, They're it, still recovering some, from sideways? <laughs> yeah. Really? You get pretty good <laughs> Merlot. For, for cheap, for on the deep. cheap? That's awesome. Uh, I will have to, I'll have to check that out. They're usually a little... Um, on the drier side, in my opinion, but then again, I haven't had a Merlot in a long time. I should try. One. I I like the the flavor the the berry flavors that come through. Yeah, they're really usually a darker cherry or like a currant blackberry. Blackberry. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, and it went well with my pizza meal. Oh yeah, so the pizza that was brilliant. Uh, media that I've been consuming this week. Hey, guess what? What? Another basketball rant is coming right up. Uh, who's playing? Round one of the playoffs, over, done with, it's gone. Vamoost out the doorway, and you know what's happening now? Round two, as we speak, as we're recording this on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. April 30th. Uh, April 30th. Right now, as we speak, the Celtics and the Wizards are playing, and that is a great series because there's a lot of animosity between those two teams and no love lost. All right, all right. Dude lost a tooth. Oh, what? Yeah. What? Which tooth? I don't know. Did he get punched? I, I, That's horrible. I haven't seen what happened, actually. My friend who's watching the game said that uh, a player lost a tooth. Jesus Christ. <laughs> do you do so. you keep playing after that? Or do you... Well, I guess they're professionals, you know. But they have to be taken... If they're bleeding, I assume he's bleeding. Um, you Unless he just swallowed the tooth. Uh, <laughs> then 
That's it, Isaiah right? Thomas got his tooth knocked out, then hit back-to-back three points. Oh, well, never mind. That's Boo! Hey, that's the best way to take it. Instead of starting a fight, just kick the fucking other person's ass in basketball. Good job. God dang. <laughs> that's incredible. I'm watching the clip now. Um, so I've been watching a lot of basketball this week. My whiz kids doing their thing. The Wizards? Yeah. Uh, who are they playing? The Raptors? Or wait, uh, no. The Wizards are playing so, the Celtics sorry. now. Oh, oh, because they won. Who did they beat? The Wizards beat the Hawks. The Hawks, sorry. I, the I don't know Celtics the names of these closed teams. out the Bulls. <laughs> okay. Um, and the the Raptors did win. The Raptors played the Bucks in round one. Okay. And so the Raptors are going to be playing Cleveland. Nice, nice. And then we have on the other side the Spurs closed out, so they'll be playing against the Rockets. And Golden State will be playing against is it the Clippers or the Jazz? I think that that series might be undecided. Wow, these are a bunch of teams that I would never expect to be good at basketball. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good that's uh, good yeah it's so, not like the heat or okc i mean the okc was in it but okc got but knocked they got knocked out, out right yeah houston yeah by the rockets that's good the because houston rockets? okc doesn't have go houston kevin durant anymore and so they don't really have a team <laughs> um they only have russell westbrook who is amazing but can't do it so the jazz and the clippers play today okay um and See? that's game seven of the series so whoever wins jazz clippers that's an interesting series because if the clippers lose that's the end that the end of a six-year attempt to put together chris paul deandre jordan and blake griffin on one team and win a championship why are they uh, that team's being broken up they'll have to be okay because they've never made it past round two I see, I see. That sucks. In six years. Are you a Are you a Clippers fan? I am a Chris Paul fan. I like his game, uh, but I don't like the Clippers. I see. Okay. I don't think. Yeah. Well. Whatever. I'm a Spurs guy. Yeah. And, well. Uh, yes. You can't. You can't. You can't necessarily be that much of a fan of Western Conference teams. <laughs> If your team is in the Western Conference. But my Eastern Conference team is the Wizards, and they're a pretty exciting team to watch. Now, other than that, uh, I finished a Down Brown novel this week. Oh, cool. The Lost Symbol. What's Uh, it about? Not the most recent one. It is a lot about the Masons in Washington, D.C. It was interesting in that he he took Robert Langdon, his um, symbologist, and put him into the u.s instead of going abroad with it but i I think that makes it a little less interesting okay (laughs) unfortunately um and what else uh rewatched the movie hush Hush? last night i hush is a pretty interesting uh horror film it's a thriller in which the main character the protagonist is a deaf woman okay and she's getting terrorized by this guy in her house alone in the woods. That a pretty is scary. scary. <laughs> Everything about uh, cabins in the woods are scary. Very, very scary. Very much so. So we can cut about half of what I just said um, right there. I'm keeping it all in. I hope the audience <laughs> loves it. But also, if you're watching a YouTube video, I do put the topic timestamp in just for you guys. You know, I put a little extra effort in because this podcast tends to run a little long sometimes. But hey, you stick around for the fun guys enjoying their time talking to each other, right? Exactly. So, Julian. Yeah. What'd you drink last night? Uh, last night, I actually, I had a wine. I went out to dinner with my mother and my girlfriend. Um, we we went to this nice, I think it's the, the, new, the new trend in New York City. Um, this is, I'm telling you guys on the up and coming, the new food trends in New York City, guys. So, because I'm, well, that's where I'm from, after all. Um... The new trend is to have the farm to table food. So the the restaurants are in partnership with the the farmers. Um, yeah, yeah. Particularly, I believe through Union Square, there's a famous farmer market. So farmers market. The restaurant was called Friend of a Farmer. I think it's in Brooklyn Heights. We had it's it's kind of expensive. I I wouldn't 
it's a night nice, they had really good food i'm not gonna lie but it is a little expensive um we had let's see we had a chardonnay it was lenoir lenoir gourier i can't pronounce french words <laughs> uh, i will not try to say that again good luck figuring out what i said it's a it's from borgnogne borgione b-o-u-r-g-o-g-n-e Bourguignon. Bourguignon. Macon Villages. Mont Belay. Chardonnay. Uh, it was it was a really nice drink. It was a really nice bottle of wine. Um, it was very buttery, which is what you come to expect from Chardonnay. Um, the Burgoyne? It's Burgundy. Burgundy. That's really. Yeah. Well, it's from Burgundy, guys. You can check it out. Uh, <laughs> nice <Nailed> Chardonnay. It. <laughs> nice uh, Chardonnay from Burgundy. It was really buttery, um, but but it also at the end, um, like the end notes were acidic, so it was really nice. Actually, I thought it goes in really smooth, but then it gives you that punch in the face, and your face goes all sour. Um, but I, I actually really liked the wine. It was it was a really nice wine. Um, and then. That's more or less what I have drank. We get in, we get, you send me a message or something? What, what is it? I did send you a Thanks. message. Thanks. All right. Just so you know, we do Skype call in to do this podcast. It still works, though, sort of. Um, now, the point is. You want to see a dude's tooth fall out of his mouth? That's, that's the link there. Oh, okay. I'll, whatever. I'll, I'll watch that later. Thanks. Thanks, Yvonne. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. I had the Chardonnay, and then... Cut I, that out. Cut that no, cut we're that not out. cutting that out. That is in this podcast forever on the internet, and uh, maybe I'll post the, the video link in the description below um, so everyone can watch it. Now, the point is, I also had a couple Tecate, a nice, Ooh. nice drink, uh, <laughs> nice Mexican drink. Uh, I particularly wanted to talk about... Um, what I had earlier this week because I went to Washington, D.C. for a, a uh, conference, a science conference. Well, it wasn't really that science-oriented, but I was there in D.C. from Monday to Wednesday, and I went around with my lab mate. Uh, we found this, this brewing company called Port City Brewing Company. I believe that's the name. Port City is definitely the name. I don't know if it's brewing company or anything or brewery. But that place is very great beer. I actually, I, I found out. Apparently, you can get it all, all over the East Coast. So um, we, we talked to them for a while. So it was pretty good. Um, I had a what's called their Metro Red. I had a red ale from them. It was really actually very nice. I don't, um, the only other red ale I can remember the name of is Killian's. So, uh, oh, yeah. Killian's is pretty solid. I actually like Killian's. It's not that bad of a beer. Um, and then we also tried their pale, uh, pale Ale. It's called Essential Pale Ale. Obviously, this is an up-and-coming brewery. It's super hip. So they have all these these hip names for their beers. Um, Look at the trendy guy over here. What? Oh, me? Trend, yeah. Trendy oh, guy. yeah. Farm Trust table me. Table trend, beer trend. Trust me. All the trends. They hit all, Chardonnay all is coming of back. the... Chardonnay trend. Chardonnay is back, baby. I'll start it here. Uh, they definitely hit all of the stereotypes in the bar. Um, they had the nice. the burly guy with the big ass beard, bushy beard. They had the older, hipper guy, slick back hair. He was behind the bar, you know. He's serving everyone, all that stuff. Um, but apparently, there was some sort of running group um, that finished their jog or something, or maybe they finished a race or something, because there were a bunch of sweaty people and jogging <laughs> equipment. And they were all getting beer, and I was a little confused. Um, but you know, to that's each the their point own. of the run, man. That you run so you can drink. Yeah, you know, you take in the carbs. It's a pub run, man. It's a pub run. They're all running to different pubs in D.C. Actually, it's in Alexandria, I should say. Uh, that's apparently a different place, but the metro goes there. Well, it's a metro suburb. goes somewhere close by. Whatever. Uh, yeah. So I, I had their beer. Also, they have. I think it's called Downright Pilsner. <laughs> God, these downright. fucking hipsters. Yo, Pilsners are making a comeback <laughs> no, yeah. hard right now. 
they're they're challenging IPA for the crown. Oh, absolutely. And they need to. Yeah. Pilsners are the best. Oh, especially perfect timing because we're coming in on summertime. Um, because pilsners are a little lighter, they're delicious for in the summer. So I would, Yvonne, I would suggest this pilsner to you, the downright pilsner from Port City Brewing Company. Um, it was it was pretty delicious. You can probably catch it um, in Syracuse because that's where you are. Um, here's here's well, the find a here's place. the key here, the sum, best summertime pilsner and prawns. Pilsner in prawns. Oh, Pilsners Pilsner and, and prawns. prawns. Oh, yeah, you, you were telling us. If you... Shrimp, <laughs> shrimp and beer. Yeah, no, it sounds delicious. That's all you need for delicious. a summertime meal. Uh, you could also do shrimp cocktail, I think, but prawns sounds way better to me. Um, now, Yvonne, I wanted Yo. to tell you a while back about this movie that I wrote down. It was it was actually something like three, two or three weeks ago that I watched this movie. Um, my friend has an, uh, an art studio in the city um, where he does all his art, but he has a bunch of space and a projector. So every now and then he invites all, his, all of us over to show a movie. And um, the movie was called Putney Swope. Have you seen it? Very Putney. P-U-T-N-E-Y space S-W-O-P-E. Now, Putney and that's Swope. that's how you pronounce it that he pronounces in the movie it's his name um it, it was a it's a movie that came out in 1969 um it's hmm. it's black and white but that's just a, obviously a design choice or a cinematography choice uh because they had color back then but um this movie was directed by robert downey senior uh, little did you may know <laughs> Do some people know is obviously everyone knows Robert Downey Jr. for Iron Man, and um, that's probably his most famous role in the recent years. I would say uh, I can't remember a movie that unfortunately <laughs> I like the it's first just Bang Bang Man. I, I okay, fair enough. Yeah, he wasn't that. He was also in that that movie with Zach Galifianakis, like The Rundown or something. Oh yeah, okay, and I think Which he's made maybe yeah he hasn't. Look, he's on he's on up and coming. He's he was also in um the Charlie Sherlock Chaplin Holmes movie? also. Oh, in Sherlock Holmes with yeah. Jude Law. I remember that. Um I actually like the first one. It was pretty good. Um now Now Robert oh. Downey Sr. obviously is his father and he was a director of movies. This movie was pretty funny. Um it was actually it was a hilarious movie. Um it was it was based like only one-liners but the premise of the movie was uh this this rich advertising company i I think it's sort of ties in i guess uh to a topic but um i also have something else i wanted to say but it this rich advertising company's president dies and they hold a board meeting in the beginning to root do to sorry to vote for the new um the new president of the company and uh they end up voting for putney swope which is this righteous black dude and and (laughs) and it's so funny because um it actually it's i feel like this must have been a super controversial movie because it came out in 1969 but um basically he he revamps the advertising of this uh, that this company does and he he makes everything like really soul and and southern and and black super black culture and uh of the time at least and it was it's actually a really funny movie i suggest you watch it um but it it it's all about it it, it's it has um a lot of one-liners that are really funny even now i thought they were pretty funny um and then also i had i don't know i i thought it was funny when i was coming home um and then the next day on the train so when i was coming home from that movie I, I saw a guy, I don't know, maybe I've been noticing this only, but I, I saw this guy who had a pizza pot. He, he just like bought a pizza somewhere and then took it on the train. So I don't know. I, I always thought that that was pretty weird. Uh, and I only started noticing it um, in the past couple of years that people have been doing that. People aren't delivering pizzas anymore. Um, and this guy, I feel like this is a very New York moment. Um, we got off the train and whatever. And then I, I just leave. I was listening to Kendrick Marr. It was pretty late. I was trying to go home. But he walks in with a pizza pie into 
this brightly lit um, uh, wedding cake shop. <laughs> He's just rolling through with a pizza pie to a wedding cake shop, and then he walked into the back. And that's all I, that's all I, just, just what? that, exactly, right? That's just <laughs> such a New York moment. Uh, just like, clearly, they're having a fucking party in there, and it's in a wedding cake shop, so they also have dope cake. So, um, and then I also wanted to share another New York moment for the, with the podcast. Um, it was pretty nasty. Uh, on the train, uh, this, I mean, I, it's not, it's not relevant that they're Chinese, but whatever. They're Chinese, <laughs> all right? Okay. That I don't want to be racist, but I'm not being racist because I'm half Chinese. All right. All right. I swear. <laughs> um, basically this kid was jumping all around the train. It was a kid and his mother. And he was mm-hmm. being whatever. He was being a little brat. But I'm not saying Chinese kids are brats or anything. Look at me, right? I'm totally not a brat. So uh, he had to sneeze. He started, he sneezed once. And then he grabbed his mom's hand and then sneezed three more times on the back of her hand. And she just looked at him and then went on talking to her, her friend. And that's just what? another New York moment. I don't fucking understand how that's okay with anyone, <laughs> especially me. I was right in front of it. And I don't know. Those are just the New York moments that I came across uh, in the oh. past three weeks. Um, and then also I went, I guess, I mean, I don't talk about this conference, but not important. It, unless you want to hear about it in the comment section below, tell me. Um, but speaking of advertisements, Yvonne, there are fewer advertisements if you or actually no advertisements if you choose to sign up for netflix but you will get a hell of a lot of advertisements if you have a cable package now yvonne i think that's a perfect segue to <laughs> that i just made up and perfect you clearly don't care liberal word for <laughs> yeah. what that's like, was. where are you going with this <laughs> you're being an idiot just shut up uh so i think that we should move on to the top of the show, 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 show. Bow, 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 bow. Let me write down that timestamp. It is there. Oh nine. Okay. Right. So, everyone, you've come to the top of the show. You came here to hear about uh, cutting the cord, perhaps. Subscription services are they out of control? How many are there? And also, what about this this writer's strike that could be happening? Who knows? Is it going to happen? It's definitely happening. Yvonne. It's most likely going to happen. Yeah. Where should we begin with the topic? We should begin with understanding what the hell is going on. <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, so, so wh- where are we starting? So the last time we had a writer's strike was in 2008. And if we'll remember... The major stuff about the writer's strike was about handling broadcast, but also handling things like DVD sales and different things. So there was a lot of different um, different new media that was trying to be handled in 2008. But if we look at how the how the landscape, the media landscape, has changed in 2008, we have a whole slew of streaming services and different ways of viewing content a la carte or through non-traditional means like not through your tv or anything so the writers are really coming up with uh coming to a head with how contracts were designed for old media where you get locked down for a, a year with a 22 episode season and all of that jazz and coming up against like how netflix is putting out series in a much smaller quantity per episode and you can still have this whole thing where you can get locked up for a year so that means you're working on a 13 episode season you get paid per episode but you have to contend with not being able to write for a whole year or and being locked up in that way or not being able to do as much and then you're getting less for it so there's this whole big contention between the season size and the ability to do more shows, but then the way the contracts are structured, you might not be able to. And this is really occurring because of the rise of streaming services and subservices that we see all across the media and how 
our generation, the millennials, are cutting the cord as much as possible. For instance, I personally am sub to Netflix, Hulu, I have an Amazon Prime account, HBO Go. Holy um, shit, dude, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, not not, the, not to hate on any services. These are all great services. or so. And I watch a ton of YouTube content. Right, but you don't, well... Yeah, you're sub to many channels, like this channel that you can sub to also. Huh. <laughs> Check that How out. How interesting. And like uh, independent uh, content providers like Rooster Teeth, I'm, I'm a first member as well. Right. So um, that sounds like a lot. So you must be, I mean, I don't want to go into the finances of it, but these are all, what, $10, $10 $15 right. a month, I guess. I think HBO Go is 20 right? Uh, or or I'm not actually positive on the HBO. Yeah, Go. well, I, I'm not. Look, I, well, the uh, H, HBO now, I think it is. Yeah, right? HBO the, now is twenty dollars a month, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But um, don't go run out and they're like, oh my god, it's so cheap. Got to do it. Um, but but yeah, you're right. There okay. there are so many different streaming apps. Uh, no, I guess. And I was a programs. sub of the CBS app. Oh, you are the CBS service. But, you know, you just had to cut the cord somewhere, right? Um, (laughs) The point is, Ivan, at what point does this become just cable all over again? At what point are these companies going to break down and start advertising uh, in between shows? I mean, I I think Hulu already does that. Hulu, even if you have a yeah the a, premium a right? paid subscri- subscription, you can you still get ads. The you, they have a higher tier level, which is no commercials. Right. So this is this is becoming a problem, right? You have to uh, write for these companies, be, or because everyone that's where the viewership is. If you wanna if you wanna become a famous writer or have a career for writing TV shows, then you have to start writing for Netflix. I think now. Uh, if you can, because it's it's such a large company now. Um, if you and can, they're the score ones that are gig, demanding new shows. Of course, way they are, more because they have than, the money. Than, yeah, and they're not. They're the thing that's cool about s- services like Netflix is that they're not nailed down to a time schedule the same way that a traditional TV uh, channel would be. Right. Right. Exactly. Like NBC has their fall season, their summer season. And they have to be ready for sweeps week and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, which is where their the Nielsen ratings come in. So they have a lot of really determined set points throughout the year that they have to hit with this kind of show or that kind of show. Uh, but Netflix can pump out all sorts of different shows from uh, comedy specials to um, like dramas or comedy series. Like literally they, anything. <laughs> yeah, and their own movies Except are for funding maybe now. Porn. So. It's 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 a really interesting way of having different shows and different medias and pumping them all out at as just as soon as you can get them just to build a catalog. Yeah, and they can have the added benefit of calling it a Netflix exclusive, uh, which adds a lot of exclusivity rights and things like that that people will want um, more. They'll want their Netflix subscription in order to watch it, and that's really good advertising for them. But it's not yeah. particularly beneficial for the writer of the uh, TV series. Uh, I had a question. Do you know if Netflix TV series are eligible to win? What's the TV version of the Oscars? The the sure. Emmys. Yeah, the Emmys. Globes? Yeah. Um, say, yeah. So play, uh, things like I think um, House, House of Cards. Yeah, I was about to say is the was at least the premier Netflix show to win uh to win awards uh so uh the uh, so like robin wright won the best actress right uh, she was great in that show uh, so eight golden globe nominations robin wright won best actress in 2014 kevin spacey won best actor in 2015 for the emmys um, and I'm sure they've been nominated for other things. Okay. So this is this. Uh, so really, what's interesting is that we have premium TV networks, really, um, or premium internet companies that are f- kind of following the path laid out by HBO, but in a much cheaper subscription base. So not being tied to the cable box, but being tied to the internet. I see. 
Um, now, you're right, you're right. There, it, so you think HBO started... We got to go back to the root. I think... I think, um, yeah, HBO was always the premium, and still is, the premium channel on on your basic cable network or your, even your uh, Time Warner cables, and, and then there's Dish Satellite, I guess, or whatever, and I can't even, uh, Comcast or whatever. Direct TV. Yeah, the, the cable providers, the, the TV providers. Um, HBO was obviously always the premium one. They had the best content, the stuff that you really wanted to watch, like The Sopranos and things like that. Sopranos is still considered by many, many uh, TV critics, etc., as the greatest show of all time. Right. The Goat. I, so I it, haven't it is seen it. The premier, like, it is the network, or it is the, the channel network, however you want to call it, that had the premier content, and it diversified into sports. They have boxing matches, movies, oh, yeah, you comedy, TV shows, and all of those things are you know, this is the premier channel from which to get those things. And now we have a slew, as I said earlier, of different things. Now, I'm going to ask you as a person who, I don't think you watch a lot of TV to begin with. No, I don't. Right? So for you, cable services are kind of, like cable TV is kind of useless, right? Right, absolutely. I, d- I don't even watch sports that often. I watch, I'll watch it if it's at, on at a bar and I go out of my way to watch the World Cup. But... Um, I and I also I watched the Matt. This is a while ago, but I watched the Manny Pacquiao, um, wait, what's his name Mayweather Floyd Mayweather fight. I, yeah, I watched that fight, but that's only because all my you friends were watching meet? it. Uh, yeah, all my friends were watching it, so I watched it. I watched actually. We had to hijack it from Russian uh, Russian uh, internet provider source or like internet. Sorry, website. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, and we watched it on my friend's phone because we had no way of watching it otherwise. So <laughs> it was really funny. But um, yeah, so I don't, I I love, I mean, I wish I could watch all these shows, but I would honestly rather wa- uh, play video games, to be honest with you. So um, in, the other, in the other realm uh, of the video game, the other consumable media, that is fairly popular, I'd say. Uh, we have Xbox coming out with their own subscription service. I don't know if you've heard of this. Um, I, I'm not sure what they're calling it, but it's essentially a Netflix for video games. So you'll pay $10, I believe it's $10 a month. You can select from their selection of games that is ever rotating. I believe they'll keep a couple first party games like Halo 5 or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, there and then you just download the game and then you have it you can play it as much as you want or whatever um, and it's only ten dollars a month so I, I think that's where gaming if that takes off that's where gaming's definitely going to go it's and sony has already had this kind of system right right however it's different with sony because they invested a lot of money they thought this was the future of gaming uh, they invested a lot of money um in a, a a company called Gaikai, I believe that's their name, um, and they they run the streaming service that they use for PlayStation Now, which is which has a back catalog of a bunch of PlayStation, PlayStation Two games, and PS Three games. They're now introducing PS Four games to it. However, the thing is, you stream the games, you don't download them. And for gaming, a lot of games require input latency to be at a very minimal minimal thing so Mm -hmm. um and that's really hard to do over the internet so the latency is always noticeable when you play those games and if you're playing something like a multiplayer game that becomes a very difficult thing to deal with and on top of that their their pricing schemes are a little confusing as opposed to xbox which just gives you i think you can pay monthly or you can pay yearly like netflix or not like netflix but uh but similar, it's a similar pricing scheme. And I think that's the way to go if they're gonna do it. Um, and I, I might even consider doing it if I'm gonna get an Xbox game. Um, and it also doubles for Windows PC people because some of the games are play, they're part of their Play Anywhere program where you can, if you buy the game, uh, let's say, I actually just bought Halo Wars 2, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I saw it on sale, so I just bought it. I can play it on my PC or I can play it on my Xbox. Um, I just bought it nice. once, so it's it's pretty cool. Um, 
But yeah, I don't I don't watch a lot of TV shows, even though everyone's telling me to watch Game of Thrones, watch this, watch that, watch watch this random obscure anime. I'm like, dude, you should watch Game of Thrones. Uh, I should watch Game of Thrones. The titties are out. People are dying. Heads are getting cut off. Everyone's getting betrayed. But I don't know anything about it. All right, I'm gonna wait until the series ends and everyone shuts up about it, and then I'll <laughs> fucking watch it. All right. All right. You're gonna Breaking Bad it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna break. Actually, I caught the last season live of Breaking Bad. Um, there you go. But yeah, so because it, it touches near and dear to my heart as I'm a chemist. <laughs> but um, but right. So so, so okay. for for people like you who are more concerned with having the video game a la carte service, um, do, like how important is it to you? to to see the the transition of uh, in media so like we're the cord cutting generation not just because we want to have things on demand a la carte or whatever but are we even going to be as interested in the medium as we continue going on uh. like now with the rise of twitch gaming and different things the the t a lot of the time that was dedicated towards watching scripted television unscripted television just television in general can be put towards different kinds of mediums right like watching Twitch a gaming. streamer right. yeah um so how do you think that's going to affect the this this generation how do you think that us from a gaming perspective how 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 does that affect you like a person like yourself uh well it i i think um sony might have to well whatever that the whole console war is a different thing but i think um I I would I've already moved on to digital games pretty much exclusively. I don't really buy except for Persona Five because I wanted all the collector stuff because I love that game. But um, I I I think so. I like to download my games. That's just way easier for me now. Even though mm -hmm. um, I have a bunch of CDs behind me, you can't see them because they're keyed out. But um, Thank God, because I don't, I don't even want to see them. It's disgusting. I don't want any more physical junk laying around. I don't want to have to buy... Sorry, I don't have a green screen, guys. Yeah, no, don't worry. <laughs> I don't, because I already have so much crap laying around. Um, so I, I like the idea that we're moving towards, because I don't want to buy DVDs or anything. Not, But that was, that was already solved by cable, right? You could watch a movie on your cable. Um, right. But I, I like the trend. I like... I like the idea that it's going towards on demand. You can stream if your internet's super great. You can even stream 4K um, video now if you're paying a lot of money for internet, of course. But uh, eventually, that that price will come down. We'll be able to get uh, really high speed internet in most areas. Maybe not the middle of America, but uh, on the coasts at least. Um, but yeah, I I I I see a trend that is probably not good for the people involved in creating the shows like the writers but um that's so well hidden uh, except for the strike apparently it's it's uh becoming a problem it's i mean i honestly didn't even know about the strike until you told me uh today <laughs> i i i don't know because i don't i don't pay attention to to tv shows that often i i honestly don't um but but Things like the gaming service, right? Um, let's see. I, I, I don't think it's going to become that popular because, um, well, I think it'll work on Xbox, but I, I think, actually, you know what? I don't, I don't think Microsoft is going to have to invest so much money because why would someone put their game on this service, right? Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? You can make sixty if you can make sixty dollars. Um, or well, I guess they make. I think they end up if a sixty dollar game is sold, they end up making somewhere around thirty five dollars. Uh, the public, the the developers end up making thirty five dollars because of publishing fees and then uh, paying for the disc and things like that. Um, but so Xbox is gonna have, or Microsoft is gonna have to invest a lot of money up front just to get their game on the service. Uh, as I assume Netflix does with a lot of TV shows. But Netflix has a lot of money right now, so they can actually get all these big-name TV shows. Um, I think they, they ended up starting out uh, Netflix, that is. Um, they, they must have started... I don't remember what what shows were on it to begin with, but I, I've, 
I always remember hearing nothing but good things for them. So they must have invested a crap ton of money to begin with because it doesn't make sense to put your thing, your, your media or your, your TV show, something that you spend a lot of, a lot of time and money investing into uh, onto these services unless you're going to make money back, right? Unless they gave you a lump sum of money to begin with. But here's, here's the thing. Uh, uh, the networks, because the Netflix model was so new when Netflix and Hulu and these places started, especially Netflix, because Netflix was really doing a lot of back catalog stuff. Yeah. Uh, the TV, or TV networks um, didn't realize what kind of strength and what kind of market share Netflix would build off of these back catalogs and being able to watch things, binging them, no commercials and things like that. So the initial launch of Netflix in terms of that back, back catalog was actually ridiculously cheap if we look at the structure of contracts as we go forward. Right. So Netflix was able to really grasp hold of the market share of streaming services of back catalog stuff just based on the idea that these uh, the networks didn't understand the internet culture and didn't understand the idea of binge watching and different things as much as uh, the the founders of Netflix would understand. Right. And then as they continued moving on, now Netflix has the idea of Amazon, which is Amazon has never turned a profit. Not yet, anyways. I think, because didn't they just turn a profit? That Well, that's news then to me. Okay. Um, but traditionally, Amazon has attempted to never turn a profit because they're reinvesting their All money. All of their 100% of the net profit they, that they make it goes straight back into the company to develop things like their new grocery store, things like that. Or their drone program, or yeah. their new TV series. Oh, uh, yeah, they have a TV Amazon series. Amazon just turned a profit for the eighth straight quarter. Ridiculous. Okay, um, so there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there we go. I was incorrect. Go figure. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, with with So... Netflix then turned this corner of trying to produce their own prestige television to have their own back catalog. Because as you said, at the beginning, it made a lot of sense to have old TV networks because that was cheap. But yes. really what's going to be cheap is when you have your uh, back catalog of your own stuff that you don't have to pay out. And it's all internal. Uh-huh. Like so Tausic Cards and Orange is the New Black, I believe, is Netflix exactly. exclusive. Yeah, yeah. And those, I mean, those are just the two most popular, but uh, they have, I think they have at least 50 shows that are exclusive to Netflix by now. I th uh, And I think that they talked about having at least one new show come out every month, Holy if, if, not, <laughs> if not sooner than that. And then their comedy specials are coming out hard and fast for the right, rest of the like year. Like Louis C.K., David Chappelle... Those those are I think exclusive to Netflix. If I'm yeah, not mistaken. Chris Rock is coming out. Um, oh, I gotta see special. that. <laughs> they're they're just dropping a bunch of money into the laps of really famous comedians and saying, do some exclusive shows for us. So Dave Chappelle got two. Louis did one. Uh, Louis C.K.'s I just watched most of, and I I can't say that this was my favorite stand up by the way. No, yeah, I I I liked it. Obviously, I he's one of the few, and this is a side tangent. He's one of the few comedians that just audibly makes me laugh he's <laughs> so hilarious uh but you're right i didn't think that this uh particular uh stand-up was that funny i i think his older stuff was funnier but it was still funny i liked it a lot so so you even got drawn into watching this louis ck this yeah no i louis love i love louis ck but exactly so, that's the point so I love Netflix Louis C.K. Got it. The Netflix <laughs> model is working, right? They're they're using their internal data to spot inefficiencies in the market, right? Comedy specials is are an inefficiency, so they're producing as many as they can. Right? Who they're knows what Comedy Central is doing? <laughs> exactly. So, and Comedy Central is also behind a different kind of paywall. Right. right? Exactly. It's a basic cable program. So How else we have do you watch South Park. You can actually watch South Park on um, on their. Can you still do that? I'm, do you I'm know? not positive on the Comedy Central webpage. What's, what's going uh, no, on South Park dot com. I think was where you, you could watch all of the episodes of South Park. I remember for free, without I think maybe minimal ads, 
Uh, similar to The Daily Show. You know how the dailyshow.com you can just watch every episode of The Daily Show. Uh, I think even back to when Jon Stewart was on it. Um, but, right, so... so uh, moving, I, I... Back to the topic of whether I like this subscription service model, I think it makes sense I for the consumer, absolutely. Um, because I... Trust me, I would... I. If I like something, if I like a TV show, I would pay, I would pay money to watch it without ads. My least favorite thing is just being interrupted now with ads. I, I this is particularly, uh, I guess, relevant because I, I was in a hotel uh, from Monday to Wednesday, which had cable, um, mm-hmm. and I haven't watched cable in a long time. And of course, I, t- I turned on the show. You know, I, I got to watch my SpongeBob, dude. I love SpongeBob. Uh, SpongeBob is actually one of my favorite shows. <laughs> this is this shows uh, my taste in in uh, <laughs> in anything really. Um, <laughs> SpongeBob. Um, yeah, it's great. It's great. So, but I I was really pissed off because there were ads for maybe five minutes straight. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and they're all just like flashing stuff in front of me. And um, one of our friends works in advertisement and he was he was telling me he, he hates ads too, even though he works in advertisement. Um, but I, and I think so is his girlfriend, but uh, I didn't, look, he, he was, cause he, he notices a lot of things about ads because he works with, he work he advertises for people. So, um, I think you know who I'm talking about, Yvonne, yeah, yeah. but, um, yeah, so he, he always tells me things about ads that I might not know. Um, or he might notice an ad that I didn't even see because, uh, like, or product placement in a movie or something like that that I, I wouldn't even notice, but subconsciously I do know. But that's a completely different topic. I am so beyond annoyed with the amount of goddamn product placement in movies. Yeah, right. It is but that's how they get the, some money. It draws money me out of movies movie. all the time because I'm noticing it. Like, I recently, like, this this struck me the most in Get Out because Get Out is kind of like, it's a social commentary. It's talking about all these different things, but they've got major fucking windows phone oh my God. uh product placements the whole place and like the surface and all this stuff and it's just like bros <laughs> this is supposed to be a social commentary movie i understand that you need to make money but gosh there's like well, there's better to ways to do movie. it yeah um the, yeah, yeah right well i don't know I, if there are better ways to do it i'm not um saying that well yeah you know sometimes you do sell out so yes uh, there is a problem. By the with way, it. we're willing to sell out to all advertisers. Yeah, yeah. Please watching. advertise on our podcast. You know, Brent, what is it? Who? who has, <laughs> I've I've heard so many ads on different podcasts. What? We'll, trust us, guys. We'll try to keep it ad free. You know, I know we're blowing up and shit, so we might have to accept some ads eventually. It's no big deal. No, my point is, I would I would pay. I do pay a premium. I pay a premium to Netflix because I have a Netflix subscription, so I don't get any ads. You know, um, and I would do that if I really really liked a phone game per se per se. Um, I would pay for it if i could some of these freaking games this is a different thing but sort of related actually we're mostly just talking about ads now but honestly some some oh i guess but this is a really good like example youtube red youtube red was the same it's the same idea absolutely right? yeah it's they're, removing they're, advertisements from even youtube videos so i like don't know if it are five to 15 seconds and but it removes all all advertising does it actually remove ads from other videos that aren't youtube red exclusive content it should yes okay okay um so it, it because you're paying the so the 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 sub service fee uh, basically it's taking the proportion of money it, it they're balancing out the proportion of money that they would make from ad revenue from you watching said ad yeah and they're balancing out through their sub service but it's also internalized so they're making more money off of an individual viewer through the youtube red but it's also providing an ease of access because what youtube is trying to do is capitalize on the let's watch it now of course let's not have that's what uh, it's for ads and you, whatever in front by of the it. way you should watch some of our youtube uh <laughs> i i have an example of uh video gaming uh on on the phone um the example is uh, that requ- that is 
related to this ads and and marketing and how you pay for things, um, Nintendo released two games, uh, two very large games that were very popular on the phone recently. They released Super Mario Run and they released Fire Emblem Heroes. Fire Emblem Heroes is free to play and okay. Super Mario Run is $10. Which one do you think made more money, Yvonne? Fire Emblem. Fire right, Emblem. exactly. So Fire Emblem Heroes made, I think, maybe twice the amount of money as Super Mario Run. <laughs> He's playing it right now. Uh, it says it's actually a pretty good game. But um, the point is, I would... I But, right, so I would pay a premium to have no ads on... I don't know if Fire Emblem Heroes has ads, to be honest with you. But, but they have a bunch of things prompting you to spend more money, which are ads, essentially, but technically for the game, right? So... Yeah. Um, I, I would pay the premium for Mario Run to have no ads, but I think even that game uh, has has some ads, or has some incentive to keep buying things. But the, the thing, or they're called microtransactions, right? Um, right yeah. Transactions. Um, the point is, I don't, it's just they can make more money if they put ads on it, or if they, if the people providing you with the media, that is, um, if they put ads on it, and if you if you if they keep it behind a paywall, I yeah they keep it behind a paywall and then offer you premium service. They they may make less money, um, if unless they're as popular as Netflix is, which they clearly I think Netflix stuck to their guns, and I really I do respect them for that. They never they, to this day they don't have any ads in their. Um, in their shows or in their movies. When you watch a movie, you don't get an ad at the beginning or at the end or anything. Um, so I do, I do like that about Netflix. Um, I think the, the, uh, I think the thing that, that is interesting now is that the content, the, it, I think the people have different ideas of the content that they're getting. So with Netflix, you're getting hundreds of hours of possibility in content right you get movies tv you can throw it up yeah. while you're doing laundry you can put it on and then just fall asleep you which can netflix, netflix is saying, and this is chill exactly <laughs> um netflix is saying that sleeping is probably their biggest enemy because it's <laughs> wasting server space <laughs> well that's um, why it, it prompts you if you've watched maybe five episodes in a row they ask are you, you are you still watching <laughs> yes netflix Net, stop shut up. judging me um <laughs> i want to watch the next episode <laughs> <laughs> but what's interesting is now seeing like um with these these internet providers this uh, you can get this a la carte menu of different services and even though for instance cable tv you can get hundreds of channels for your for your for your pay right right but the it doesn't feel necessarily i i know for our generation for me personally uh it doesn't feel like the amount of money i'm paying yes the content is worth it and the content isn't generally i mean they have moved to more on-demand type things or tivo where you can record and play back right Right, um, but the content isn't necessarily being presented to me in a way that um, that I want it to be. Because, well, I'm an internet superstar hero kind of well, content guy, right? I'm going to watch are. all of the internet that I can uh, on my schedule, <laughs> um, and watch it while playing video games. Uh, but the the idea that Netflix, you pay this minimum fee. Hulu, you paying like ten bucks a month, right? But yes. the content that you get is so matching of that paywall that that's the interesting thing for me. And as we progress, as networks are really trying to figure out how to balance this, we have like things like the CBS network has their own paywall subscription service where you can get back catalog episodes because CBS hasn't put out their 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 stuff to other uh, to other services, like yeah. it's hard to you can't find elementary anywhere unless you're going to pay per episode or pay the fee to watch the back the back catalog. So, are we going to have more models like this, where like NBC has their own app and network and and, and subscription fee, CBS and ABC and all these networks are having it. So then we're going to have to run into packaging all these networks into one thing yeah now we have a la carte cable <laughs> all over again except for on the internet 
And what's interesting is YouTube is moving from having individual show content creators to this more um, with the launch of YouTube TV, 35 bucks and you get all these different channels, but you don't get premium channels like HBO and, and some other, other other things. But we're it's kind of like reinventing the wheel on the next medium. Yeah, or, or you're going to end up, if it stays a la carte, you're going to end up either spending more money than you would on cable because you just have that many subscriptions or you're going to end up saving maybe five dollars right but but you know that adds up over the year it's definitely worth it um but of course unless you use your the same password every single time you're gonna end up (laughs) fucking forgetting your password and then it's all over (laughs) so the convenience of just turning on the the tv and flipping through channels is now going to be spending 30 minutes trying to remember what the password yeah. <laughs> or or getting your password stolen and it's the same password you use for your bank account and so yeah, now God everything everything all that over. you own is going to get stolen it's all uh, over man. or you could get prosecuted jesus here's Christ. the here's a here's a really interesting <laughs> article that i read so uh, with the rise of subscription services there's been also a rise of sharing these services of right? course now, my mom has my Netflix account. <laughs> now that might be within the terms of service because you might it might no yeah I household, I can right? have two viewers on my Netflix account and my mom is the only other one yeah. So uh, with the Netflix thing, the terms of service of Netflix say that within a house, uh, Netflix is far more lenient. This is from a Forbes article, um, lenient in its terms of service, recognizing that a household will share an account, though it does not define what a household means. Now let's say HBO or Net uh, or HBO's uh, terms of service is that HBO Go you must have be a subscriber with an account in good standing with an authorized distributor of HBO to use the app, which means that if you share your HBO Go password with your your friend Tom, Billy, Hank, and Harry, right? You know, <laughs> yeah then you could be in violation and the more you watch <laughs> the more you're in violation and if you watch oh up to five thousand dollars worth of content that could be a felony jesus christ and this all comes from this forbes uh forbes author cashmere hill mm-hmm. calling out a new york times uh, author jenna wortham who is a tech journalist and saying what did she release in an article that she was committing a crime <laughs> possibly good so we'll, we'll we'll put a link to this article in the in the description yeah, on the youtube channel definitely but basically it's it the the forbes author is looking at what the new york times author wrote and just saying what you did and what you talked about was illegal <laughs> well actually a lot of things are illegal um in terms of when we just agree to uh, obviously whenever you install something or uh, whenever you uh, subscribe to something they have the terms of agreement right and you just the click terms of service terms stuff, yeah. services sorry and you just click agree i once i once i can't remember what it was for so i don't know if it's in all terms of services um i feel like it's a clause in most of them though um i once read i i was like you know what i'm gonna read the first page of this or what because it's incredibly long and you obviously should never read it and if you disagree to it you can't use it so it doesn't matter um so i once read i think there was a clause in there that said uh the company reserves the right to change anything in these terms of services at any time (laughs) basically yeah Yeah, right that's that's a standard clause yeah that obviously why wouldn't they put that clause in there that's crazy. <laughs> that is so insane that they can just change any of these terms of uh, services at any time they want. But um, and you're still agreeing to it. So uh, that that sort of I don't know. I I like that these um that these subscription services allow you to just watch the content that you want when you want to watch it. I think that's really great. But as more and more um people catch on that they can actually just get more money from you um, or just isolate you in watching just the content that they provide um then that becomes a problem so netflix is great 
I can watch a lot of things. But what if something's not on Netflix? What if it's only on Hulu? So they're going to keep grabbing each shows that the shows that pop up or the movies that pop up that are really popular and whoever's the highest bidder is going to get it. But if you don't have that subscription service, you're going to be crap out of luck unless you subscribe. So this is and it's, the problem. It's a different model than what we have for basic television cuz I mean, yeah, basic cable, you're you're locked out of some shows, of course. But with regular television, you weren't locked out of watching these shows. Right. But with regular TV show channels getting these subscription services, now what it, the model that we might have is you're going to get locked out of watching these shows even though as as consumers of television, we're the ones that gave them the rights to 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 put things on the air to begin with. Exactly, exactly. Right. So, in terms of the history of television and how it was uh, and how television was supposed to be designed, we gave them the rights to these airwaves, and in turn, they were supposed to keep us informed with news and different things. And now it's just capitalism: pay, get get the money, get the money, get the money. And the uh, the true benefits of what we're going to see from the transition from uh, from on air basic television to basic cable to online services and media is we're going to lose a lot of that uh, that ability to get information that we need and get information that's necessary and should be available to the public. How is that going to change how uh, like people who can't afford these services get news and different things and and get entertainment like how are we going to see all these things change and 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 manifest themselves and the other part of it is the people that are producing this content are getting screwed a lot and that's why this writer strike is imminent this week because a lot of the things like you could have writers that write a, a promo for youtube right a 15 minute thing yeah and because it's considered a promo they get no pay for it but the channel, uh, they'll put the the promo on their site or on their YouTube channel with ads before it, and now they're gaining revenue through the ads, and the the show will have multiple millions right of views. But guess what? The writers are getting nothing from that and because no it credit. was used as promo <laughs> and no credit. Yeah, so that's this is partially why this writer strike is going to happen, and it's how is this new media with the seasons that are wherever there's no season for netflix right but the contracts are different everything's weird uh i really highly recommend people take a look there's a pretty nice polygon article that i read right uh, we'll, we'll post that in the we'll description below yeah. i i had a question uh that i just thought of uh how do you think this strike let's say the writers get what they want right how do you think this strike is going to affect what netflix does their subscription uh, model, right? Because they're gonna, let's say they agree to pay the writers more. That means I gotta that, take a break. Okay, okay. I'm gonna piss my pants. God damn it! <laughs> so, all right, all right. Uh, we'll uh, cut it out. We'll question. cut it out. Think of this question again, and then we'll stay together. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, Avon, I had a question for you. If these, uh, what are they called? If this strike ends up going through it well it's gonna happen right if this Most strike likely, yeah. right if so if the writers guild ends up getting the things that they want how is this gonna affect uh netflix's uh, netflix and all the tv channels and all their things how is this gonna affect their uh pricing models how do you think it's gonna affect their pricing models and do you think netflix will cave and end up showing ads on their thing just to make on their service just to make more money or to compensate for the amount of money they're losing by paying the uh, writers more, which obviously they deserve more money. Right. Um, I. Th this is an intriguing question that I don't necessarily have the answer to. Okay. Um, I think. I think actually Netflix is in a way stronger position than uh, than standard uh, network than the other networks, uh, either basic television or basic cable. Um, I think actually Netflix is in a much stronger position because they they feel that they can, um, they they can go into that negative profit zone, uh, of course, and and push out as much as possible. And what's really, um, what's really worrying is that uh, the viewership of of the other networks is dropping really quickly. 
so that this uh, Polygon article said that a study released in 2000, either 15 or 16, uh, result, uh, showed that increases in subscriptions to Netflix resulted in a 50% drop of viewer- viewership for most net- networks. Okay, so people right. are watching Netflix a lot more, and I think net- or ne- because of Netflix, Netflix's growth, its capitalization on market share, so more people are, are getting into the Netflix uh, zone, uh, uh, that Netflix is going to be exceedingly powerful in terms of their position. At the same time, if this is going to change uh, pay structures and different things, like there are different ways to get content that you'll enjoy. A lot of YouTube channels are growing in terms of their popularity and different things. Now, the other nefarious side of that is that advertisers, a lot of them are dropping out of YouTube stuff recently. Oh, so yes. There I might be that. That's I've a heard. whole other slew of converse, con- controversy, but it's becoming harder for some YouTube content creators to continue making the same amount of money they were before. So, yeah, we're totally family-friendly. Please advertise on our videos. <laughs> just a joke, just a joke. Okay. So, uh, so what's happening now is that we're seeing uh, costs rise. Uh, hopefully, costs will rise because writers are getting paid what they should be paid uh, for their work, uh, appropriate of what Right, they went to school for this, for Christ's sake should be paid <laughs> <laughs> um I, I and then we also have advertisers using uh algorithms and different uh advertising you know methods and knowledge of of how their click-throughs are working etc to to be better on youtube or to be more active elsewhere whereas traditional media like watching commercials on tv or billboards they don't really have really great metrics but they're still being used so now we have the a la carte service uh, and there a lot of like hulu is subsidized by uh the amount of money that they have to pay to get the content is subsidized by advertisements yes but if advertisers are going to leave or not want to pay into it like they're doing with youtube then now we have a different kind of uh, cost structure that will be way more damaging or way more uh, effect, uh, like will have a greater effect on how shows are produced and how sh- uh, chan- uh, like subs- uh, service providers are, are what's the word I'm looking for? Service providers models work than uh, having to pay writers their, their, their fair share. I see. I see. Well, you know, we've been going for about an hour on the topic, and I really think that I I like the idea of being able to pay a uh, service just to get rid of ads. But <laughs> if uh, if people if it means <clears throat> screwing over uh, writers and and content creators to the point where they need to strike. And they need to, because uh, this is obviously this is their career. So they they want this. They want to be. They want to continue writing, but they don't want to get screwed over by these companies. Um, and so if it means that these people are being poorly treated um, in terms of their wages and various other reasons, I, I assume, um, then I don't want to. I don't. I don't like that. <laughs> obviously, and I hope the Writers Guild and Netflix and the TV companies and Hulu and everyone else comes to a a middle ground where they can all agree because I don't want to have to pay much more than I already do, right? You know, uh, it ends up be costing a lot of money, um, and I assume we're gonna be seeing a lot more piracy soon. Uh, not that that doesn't already happen right, right now, but uh, any closing thoughts on the topic, Vaughn? Uh, I wish the Writers Guild the best of luck in of their course. negotiations, and I I am supportive of, of when unions are able to uh, work towards fair share and fair compensation for work. That is uh, the point so of a union. I'm, I'm I'm well for the Writers Guild actually being paid for uh, getting the writers paid for the work that they do. Yeah. Um, and I hope that we get some really cool a la carte versions of television products because if i could cut down and pay like 15 bucks and get all the content that i really really want all the time then i'm i'd be super into that 
Yeah, but paying well, thirty five dollars to YouTube for YouTube TV doesn't seem like a thing I'd ever do. Yes, <laughs> fuck you, YouTube. God damn it! <laughs> Why are we putting this on YouTube? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Well, we'll end the topic there. Thanks so much for coming out, guys. We're gonna switch over to our newest segment, three weeks in the running now, called Hungover Radio. Uh, this is a section. Of course, also you can voice your opinions in the comments section below or at us on Twitter um, at Gaming Hungover. That is Gaming Hungover on Twitter. Please, we'd love to continue the conversation with you. And of course, if you have any questions that you'd like to see us answer, or maybe even a topic that you guys would like to see us cover, um, go ahead and tell us. We are listening, and we'll totally do that for you guys. Um, but of course. Uh, we're moving on to Hungover Radio. It is the weekly segment where you, yes, you, the viewer slash listener, can send in your music or your friend's music, such as the case of Skullmaster 5. Uh, please make it your music or your friend's music. That would be great for us so we don't get any crazy copyright things um, because we can't just play whatever song you heard on the radio, unless it was your song. Then you give us right. So we're only going to be putting this in the audio version as well. Uh, the links will be in the description below if you're watching the video. Thank you so much for watching the video. Leave a thumbs up too if you'd like to. Um, but yes, Skullmaster Five, a big fan of <laughs> of Jujubee's good. That's me on Twitch. Thanks so much for sending in your submission of your friend IZX Music. Yes, that's IZX Music. You can check him out on YouTube. He does remixes of. Uh, various video game themes. Um, of course, your song does not have to be video game themed, but I pick a lot of video game music because I think there's a lot of great music out there in video games. Uh, this song in particular is, well, it's 37 seconds long, so it's not that the longest submission we've ever had, or but it is the only submission. Uh, so yes, <laughs> it is the longest submission we've ever had. Uh, thanks so much for submitting it, Skullmaster. You guys can check out IZX Music in the uh, well, you can check them out on YouTube, and uh, it will be Super Mario World Overworld Theme IZX Remix. Thanks so much for coming out, guys. We'll check you next week, and as always, have a great day. Bye. Bye.